You're listening to Sacks in the Basement, a production of the Broadcast Basement Limited, where every show is 30 minutes of good and comes from a basement bar on the south side of Chicago. Pull up a stool, pour a cold one, and join us right now for Sacks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SacksInTheBasement.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Socks in the Basement Simulated Season with MLB The Show, brought to you by Cork and Carey at the Park, located at 33rd in Princeton. You can get Cork and Carey at the Park right now, their entire menu on Grubhub. Go visit, order, and support a Southside tradition that will be there with doors open and arms open when the baseball season returns. Until then, we have the simulated season in which the White Sox are currently in third place at 2-2, two two games behind tonight's opponent, the Cleveland Indians, who are 4-0. Aloy Jimenez, Tim Anderson, and Jose Abreu currently leading the Sox at the plate, all three of them with an OPS over 1,000, and Anderson sporting a 500 batting average, with Jimenez having four home runs in four games. Players like Juan Moncada and Leary Garcia, though, are struggling with rookie Luis Robert and new acquisitions Edwin Encarnacion, Yasmani Grandal, and Nomar Mazzara still looking to find steady footing. It'll be a battle of fifth starters as Reynaldo Lopez leads the White Sox against Zach Plezak. We send it out now to Progressive Field as the White Sox try to take game two of this series after losing game one in 10 innings last night. Let's go White Sox. It is a rainy night in Cleveland. We'll see if we even get this game in from Progressive Field. Sox in the Basement presents White Sox Simulated Baseball. Along with Cork and Carey at the park, we are proud tonight to give you, ladies and gentlemen, game two of the White Sox versus the Cleveland Indians. And they are going to play this in a drizzle to start and hope they can make it through the entire game. 21 starts for Zach Plezak last year with a 3.81 earned run average in 115 innings. He had a 1.23 whip and an 8-6 and six record. He is their fifth starter as he takes the mound. Meanwhile, Reynaldo Lopez will be up for the White Sox, but first they bat. Tim Anderson will lead it off, four-game hitting streak through all four games, hitting 500, and in a slightly heavier than normal drizzle, but we're still going to call it a drizzle because we're playing. Anderson comes up, and he wants to hurry up and swing. He's going to fly out the left field in the first pitch of the game. One pitch, one down. And there's already one out here in the top of the first inning. Yasmati Grandal's only hitting 188, but that's better than Yoan Mancada. Both players looking that they need a little bit of a jolt to the system, so Grandal will bat second tonight and be able to flip over to the left side of the plate. So we're going to get righty, lefty, righty right up at the top of the order tonight with Grandal in the two spot. The Indians have yet to lose, and I'm surprised that we're even trying to play this game in the weather that we're looking at. It is overcast, it is dark, and it is rainy. As that one is low for strike two on Grandal as he swings over a slider. Please, Zach, the pitch on the way. And that's high and inside, ball one, one and two the count. Four seam fastball, 96 miles an hour. Please, Zach, waits for the sign. The pitch. Swung on and chopped up the middle. Going to be a tough play behind second base, but he will get him. That was a tough play. First to be run down by the second baseman, and then also... To be able to turn and not break your ankle in that mud and get it over to first base and get Yasmati Grandal. A faster runner would have made it. Jose Abreu steps in now with two outs, hitting 438 through four games. Takes an inside pitch ball one. Quickly two outs here in the first inning. One and oh the count. This next pitch is a slider outside and the count is even. Abreu standing there with a glistening wet helmet. Takes an inside low slider. For ball three, three and oh, the count with Aloy Jimenez on deck. Please, Zach, and I think every player out there wants to just get up, throw some pitches, swing some bats, and get back in there because it is, I can't believe we're playing this. Dave Lawrence, the home plate umpire, and the rest of that crew decided it was good enough to play in the night. Three and one, the count after a high called strike to Jose Abreu with two outs here in the first. The pitch. And that one is low, chopped, fouled on the first base line. We have a full count here with two outs in the top of the first and nobody on. And Abreu takes a high inside fastball for ball four, and he will take his base 
And Aloy Jimenez, the young man who has done nothing less than be incredible to kick off the season. Four home runs in four games. He didn't hit one in all four games because he had a two-run home run game in there, but he hit one last night. And he continues to try to put this offense on his back as much of the lineup has been struggling. Anderson, Jimenez, and Abreu have been incredible. Unfortunately, in the two-spot, Mancata has been an automatic out. And then as you move down the lineup, it's hit or miss, at least to this point. Inside, swung on, line drive, Ramirez has it. He didn't even need the move over at third base. So a line out by Jimenez ends the top of the first. We go to the bottom of the first. No runs, no hits, no errors for the White Sox in Cleveland on the way up. Reynaldo Lopez takes the mound here in this simulated Sox game brought to you by Sox in the Basement and SoxintheBasement.com. 33 starts last year, 10-15 and 15 record with a 5.38 earned run average, a 1.46 whip. He had a rough year to say the least. In fact, at the end of the year, Ricky Renteria made comments, his manager made comments about when you get to the ball game, and I'm paraphrasing here, you should be only thinking about the ball game, not your girlfriend, not your rent, and not your personal business. And that was quite a thing to say, and like I said, I'm paraphrasing that, but he said that to Jason Benetti after the season ended, and he was also very animated on the mound during Lopez's last regular season game to end 2019. Lopez starts off with an inside fastball for strike one and quickly into the line for the next pitch, and that is strike two outside swinging to Cesar Hernandez. So Lopez has had the gauntlet thrown down to him by his manager, and then when you look at the fact that Keuchel and Gonzalez join the team, Kopech is coming back here soon, and Carlos Rodan will not be far behind in a couple of months, as this one has popped back, and Grandal will catch it in foul territory for the first out. Lopez has to pitch well. He's gone from a guy that people thought in 2019 could become a contender for staff ace or top of the rotation to a guy who's starting the season five in the rotation and most people agree will not finish the season in the White Sox rotation unless he seriously proves himself right now. It is gut check time for this young man. This is the biggest season of his life. And if it's the biggest season of his life, this could actually be the biggest start of his life at least to date. Owen won the count to Oscar Mercado on a called first strike. And the next pitch is inside taken change up, 83 miles an hour for ball one, one and one the count. The rain continues to come down as Lopez delivers. Swinging strike on a slider tailing away and quickly one and two. He looks sharp so far here in the first inning. Hopefully that continues. The pitch on the way from Lopez. Inside, four seam fastball taken, two and two the count. This simulated White Sox broadcast and all of our broadcasts are brought to you proudly by our sponsor, Cork and Carry at the Park, located on the corner of 33rd and Princeton. They are not open right now, but you can get their food and support them throughout this time by going to Grubhub and ordering right now. As this one has flown out to left field, Jimenez underneath it for the catch, and there are two away on a lazy fly ball out to left field. Quick work made out of the first and second hitters in the lineup as Francisco Lindor steps up. He had a rough day yesterday at the plate, but all of his at-bats except for one came from the right side. He is batting on the left side of the plate today against Reynaldo Lopez. The White Sox did a good job of just continually bringing up left-handed pitching to get him to move over to the right side of the plate, and it paid off for them. He was red hot coming into that game. He still has an average over 300. One and one the count with two outs in the pitch on the way, and that is low and inside for ball two. Two and one the count. Lopez working quick. 11 pitches right now, and he's almost through with his third guy. Remember a few days ago, Dallas Keuchel took 10 pitches just to get through the first batter. Pitch on the way as Grandal sets up on the outside. He put it right where his glove was, but did not get the call. Three and one the count with Fran Mill Reyes on deck. So they try to nibble, but now this is a tough count against Francisco Lindor. You don't want to let go of a good inning right here. This one is low and outside, and they do not get the call again. Same spot. Grandal was either convinced that the ump would give them that call eventually, or that it would be swung on and missed by Lindor. Neither happened, and Lindor takes a walk 90 feet down the first base. And Fran Mill Reyes steps in. I mentioned this last night on the broadcast, that Reyes was competing for time in the Padres organization 
and gets acquired in a trade and goes from being a guy that is just trying to find a spot in an up-and-coming team with so many options in the outfield to batting in the four spot every day for the Cleveland Indians as this first pitch is inside for ball one. Rain continues to come down. Indians using it looks like the exact same lineup as last night. Why not? They're 4-0. Ground ball to Garcia. Takes it on the one hop as he's moving towards first to just make the play. Momentum takes him towards first base as he flips it to Abreu to end the inning. So at the end of one, no score. And Yoan Moncada hitting in the five spot tonight with Encarnacion giving him protection instead of Abreu will come up to the plate and lead off this inning. White Sox in their road graves from head to toe. Mancata with the elbow guard and the shin guard on the appendages closest to the pitcher as the first pitch is taken as a strike low in a zone 94 mile an hour fastball. 0-1 the count. Please act to Mancata for pitch number two. Slider fouled off down the third base line and Mancata is quickly 0-2. Rain continues to come down here at progressive field. This one is skied into the gap in right center field carrying to the wall and Yoan Mancata is off the snide with a home run. His first hit of the season in game five. They move him from the two spot to the five spot in the lineup. He's a 406 foot home run that towered in the rain and the wind seemed to be knocking it down. And yet somehow it just clears the fence. I thought that was gonna be a fly out off the bat. Then I became convinced it was gonna go off the wall. And then all of a sudden I watched the center fielder look up and you can put that on the board. One nothing White Sox as Yoan Mancada finally makes solid contact with the bat. And all it took was a rainstorm and the number five guy in the opposing team's pitching rotation. But good for him. Edwin Encarnacion comes up, swings at the first offering for strike one. Please act with the wind and the pitch on the way. Swung on inside fastball, fouled off down the first base line. Inside out of that one, 0 and 2 the count. The pitch from Plezak. Outside, ball one. And the pitch. Swung on and chopped. Fouled on the first base line. Nice to see Yoan Mancada get a hit. Nice to see him do it with a home run. As Encarnacion swings at one in the dirt, it's a drop third strike. They will throw down the first base and get him easily. And he will grab some bench. That goes down as a strikeout the first for Zach Plezak. one nothing to score here with one out here in the top of the second. And Nomar Mazzara steps up to the plate. Mazzara's got two RBI on the season. He got it on opening day. He's also picked up several other hits, but he's currently hitting 200 on the season, but it's early. Batting averages can be deceptive this early on in the season. He went one for five yesterday with a double as he takes ball one. Catcher's calling for a high pitch. This one drops into the zone barely. One and one the count on a called strike. Mazzara's one of those players new to an organization and he's just got to get himself used to things. But on top of that, He's got a new batting coach, and he's got an organization that thinks that after four years as a highly touted prospect, he's missing something, and he's going to have to open himself up if he's going to figure out what that is. As this one is grounded over the top of second base, but the shift was on. Mazzara gets that ball handled by the shortstop standing right over second base, and it's flipped easily by Lindor over to Santana for out number two. And Luis Roberts steps in with the same batting average as Mazzara. Although he does have a towering shot under his belt through the first four games of this season. He's got three RBI also in his last three games. And that's not bad for a rookie batting in the eighth spot trying to get used to major league hitting. And I don't care how good you looked in AAA. As he takes two strikes now and he's 0-2 the count. Everything is going to be new for this young man. First time in progressive field in a rainstorm for him. Probably not the last though. Really coming down now. But they are determined to get this one in. This is swung on low for strike three. It's got to be hard to see that ball coming in in the mist. Robert takes a seat. That ends the inning, but Yoan Mancada connects for a drive to right center field. And the White Sox lead it one nothing midway through the second. Five out of second, and the man that tied it up in the ninth inning against Alex Colome, Jose Ramirez, steps to the plate. And the pitch from Lopez inside called strike on an 82-mile-an-hour changeup. He is a career 3-for-13 hitter against Reynaldo Lopez. 
But I don't know if career numbers matter right now for Ramirez. He's off to a hot start, hitting 500. He's having basically the same start that Tim Anderson has had for the White Sox, but he's had a little bit more power. He strikes out looking there on three pitches, high in the zone, and Lopez sits him down for his first strikeout of the game. And Tyler Naquin steps in. So my apologies, Naquin is actually in the game. He wasn't in the game yesterday, so they have different lineups for righties, lefties when it comes to the Indians. Naquin hits 429 lifetime against Lopez. He's got a double. That's the only extra base hit for him. But as I was saying about Ramirez, this guy habitually starts slow. Strike high and outside, swinging for strike number two, 0-2 the count. And this year, he's off to a torrid start. And if he keeps this up, he's one of those guys who could be an MVP candidate as this one's in the dirt and rolls to the backstop, 1-2 the count. Lopez will do it again, throwing to Grandal, the pitch on the way. And a slider gets him swinging through it right underneath it. A high slider in the zone. Two straight strikeouts for Reynaldo Lopez, who looks sharp here early on in this game in Cleveland. Carlos Santana steps in next. And the pitch on the way. Inside taken, ball one on a four-seam fastball. He was a 2019 Silver Slugger Award at first base. The man can hit. And the pitch... And that one's belted down the line. If it's fair, it's gone. And it goes just foul down the right field line. Or that was a towering shot into the upper deck to tie this game. Next pitch on the way. That was a long strike. This is just a swinging strike, and now it's one and two. He stood there and looked at it, folks. I thought that was gone. The breeze took it out. The pitch on the way inside on the hip almost hit him. Two and two the count. He is crowding the plate, and after that one was yanked, Lopez working him inside. He comes back outside on the curveball. Misses the zone. Three and two the count now. And the pitch. Swung on and ripped into left field. The White Sox had a shift on. And the shift beat him on that one. Throw into second base as he tries to stretch it. And he's out. For some reason, Santana thought all of a sudden he was a speedster. And try to take second. We'll talk more about it in a moment. End of two. one nothing White Sox. And as Leary Garcia steps in against Zach Plezak, let me tell you how that inning ends. Because it happened so fast. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The White Sox are in a shift with Moncada basically standing over at short and Aloy Jimenez in the left center field gap. So a ground ball to where Moncada would have normally been sta- standing. And it was a slow grounder that would have been easily a 5-3 to three out as this one is put in the center field for a base hit. Leury Garcia with the base hit bobbled in center field. He slides into second base underneath the tag and turns a single into a double. They're going to say single now with an E8 on Naquin. So that one gets bobbled and Leary Garcia sees the bobble, heads in and barely beats the throw into second base on an aggressive heads up play. Tim Anderson up now and takes a called first strike. 0-1 the count. So very similar to what we just saw there. Slow roller into the outfield here, though, and Jimenez comes in and picks it up, and he doesn't seem like he's going to do anything except flip it to the the relay man. As this one is fouled off down the first baseline, and then all of a sudden, here comes Carlos Santana lumbering to second base like he thought that nobody had the ball. He was lucky to have a single on that. Anderson gets called out on a terrible call out of the strike zone. That one just got missed by the umpire. And we got one out with Yasmani Grandal up and Leary Garcia at second base in the rain. Inside pitch called a strike. That was a strike. So anyway, all Jimenez has to do then is just flip it to second. They had him. He slides. They're just sitting there. It's like that scene in Major League where Willie Mays Hayes starts his slide and the guy's already standing there. He's like, come on, I got the ball. Just come a little closer so I can tag you. I don't want to have to leave the base. This is a pass ball in the dirt. Leary Garcia in the third base. So the Sox get a big break there after the Anderson strikeout that didn't seem like a strikeout. On a ball in the dirt, it rolls. And and basically, Grandal just keeps backing up and it's rolling right next to him. And that gave the opportunity for Garcia to get to uh, the third. No interference called on the play. One and two the count. The pitch on the way. Low and outside ball two. So Garcia stands at third base 90 feet away from being the second run scored for the White Sox with one out here in the top of the third inning. And again, the Sox got out of the last inning 
on just a boneheaded base running play. But they have taken advantage of two errors here to get Garcia from just hitting a single and standing on first base to making it all the way over to third. And now with three and two being the count on that ball, the White Sox need to capitalize with Grandal at the plate and Abreu on deck with one out. The rain continues to fall as Zach Plezak offers his 39th pitch already here in the second inning. As this is flared out into the left center field gap, it is going to be caught. Garcia is going to tag and head for home. The throw will be cut off, and that is a sacrifice fly for Grandal, and the White Sox lead this game 2 to nothing. And Zach Plezak is about to throw his 40th pitch of the game here in the top of the third inning. Abreu walked in the first and comes up now with the bases clear and two outs and a run all already in. He takes the first pitch high and inside for strike one. I'm enjoying a delicious Lagunitas, if you're asking today. I have the Lagunitas IPA. I try to share all the drinks that I'm having here while we're doing our simulated Sox broadcast for Sox in the Basement, which is now being covered. The post game is being put up in really good post game articles. Read them after you listen to the game. Soxon35th.com, they're a blog, we're a podcast. We're working together here to create this world for you. As a one and two pitch is fouled back, there's room. Catcher with his mask off, and he makes the play in the rain as it pours down on his face. That is the third out of the inning, but not before the White Sox get another. And after two and a half, going to the bottom of the third, Sox lead 2-0 over the Indians. The rain continues to come down here as Domingo Santana, who we did not see last night, comes to the plate to face Reynaldo Lopez here in the bottom of the third inning. Lopez has looked sharp through the first two. In reality, the only hit that was given up was because of a shift. It wasn't because of him. It was a perfectly placed ball, and it was a weak ground ball at that. First pitch, low and outside, ball one. Next pitch on the way, high and inside, ball two. The pitch to Santana. Swung on and put out into center field. Robert on his horse gets back, turns, and catches it. About 380 feet back, but luckily the wall is 400 feet back in this ballpark, in this section of that ballpark. Roberto Perez comes to the plate now in the nine hole and will face Lopez with one out. The pitch, four seam fastball right down the middle, take it for strike one. Perez has scored two runs in the last three games, including he hit a home run in yesterday's contest early on in the game, as that is a strike on a slider, 0-2. One out. Bottom of the third, 2 nothing socks. High and outside, ball one, one and two. Folks, Family Waterproofing Solutions is working right now without working. They've got their employees at home. They are paying them. They're giving them health care, but they're doing their part for social distancing during this time of crisis, as that is an outside strike on a fastball. Third strikeout for Lopez. He pumps his fist after that one. He actually spun around after the swing and the miss. He fooled him. Got on the swing just a hair too early. Yeah, he took something off. That's a changeup, actually. And he gets him for his third strikeout. Reynaldo Lopez is feeling it right now as Cesar Hernandez comes up to the plate. It's veteran-owned, female-owned, family waterproofing solutions, and they're going to be with Sachs in the basement all the way through 2020. They've signed a contract with us. They believe in what we're doing. We believe in what they're doing because when you got a vet and he's doing the right thing during this time, even though he's been designated, as a business that could do business, but he's like, nope, I'm going to do the best thing for my work family and for your families. You got to support that guy. And I thought he I thought he wasn't going to run any advertisements, honestly. And he turns around and he says, no, Chris, as the pitch is one and two on the way outside, two and two the count to Hernandez, Lopez working fa- fast. He goes, no, we can do estimates virtually. People can just go and do an estimate with us virtually. We'll figure out what we have to do, do the whole thing, and be ready to go the moment that boots are on the ground and life gets back to some semblance of normal. This one is flared out into right field. Mazara camps underneath it. Can of corn for out number three. Reynaldo Lopez cruising early. The White Sox up 2-0. Jimenez leads it off next. Foundation issues not properly handled can be costly. Family Waterproofing Solutions is owned by Ken, a veteran of the United States Marines, and his wife Maria, making them a veteran-owned business and a female-owned business that will diagnose and repair wet or leaky basements. During the current health crisis, Ken and Maria decided to pay each and every one of their workers, secure their jobs, and continue to give them health care from home. 
And while they're not currently going out and doing jobs, they will still give you an estimate and jump on and do a video consultation right now. Plus, part of the proceeds for every job that they do are donated to veteran and first responder organizations who support our frontline defenders. And currently, Socks in the Basement listeners have access to special pricing when they contact Family Waterproofing Solutions now, 708-330-4466, or visit them today at FamilyBasementWaterproofing.com. Aloy Jimenez is 4 for 14 on the season, hitting 286. All four of his hits have been home runs. So on one hand, you're very excited about the home runs. On the other hand, a base hit or two wouldn't be bad. I mean, it's it's the weird oddity of the beginning of a season. We all know Yohan Moncada is not going to be terrible all year. We know Giolito is going to pitch more than four or five innings a game at times. But in the early part of the season, you get these weird numbers, and Aloy Jimenez is 4 for 14, hitting 286 with four home runs. That's incredible through the first four games. This one's inside for ball four, and Jimenez will take his base. He has had some walks, though. His on-base percentage is far over the uh, the 300 mark. In fact, his on-base percentage, I think, is close to 400. He has had several walks. He's got four walks. So, yes, he's over the 400 mark right now in his on-base percentage. But it's either he's he's banging it out of here or he's walking or he's sitting down. And that's what he's doing so far. Yohan Mankata steps up one for 16 on the season. That means he went one for 15 before he hit a solo home run here in this game in the second. And he needs to sit there and say, you know what? The season started today. Forget those first four games and let it keep going. Jimenez with a lead over at first. No outs in the top of the fourth. First pitch is high and inside for ball one. Zach Plezak sets with no outs here in the top of the fourth inning in the pitch. Again, high and inside four-seam fastball for ball two. Mankata's not going for those. I don't think he goes for those on his worst day. Plezak either doesn't have a plan or read the wrong scouting report as he gets ready for pitch number 50 here in the top of the fourth inning against the White Sox. And that one is drilled into center field for a base hit. Jimenez will hold at second. Line shot. It did not land until it was a few feet in front of the uh, center fielder, but he only got to take one step. That thing got out there so quick, and it almost took Plezak's head off. Plezak should check his, his left ear to see whether or not it's bleeding because he might have been scraped on that one. And Carnacion immediately swings, hits one to Ramirez, who tags Jimenez and throws the first for a double play. Aloy Jimenez has to hold up there and let Jose Ramirez throw it at the first. He ran right into the tag. Mancada's at second now, but there's two outs with Mazzara up. And Carnacion came right up. First pitch grounds it out. Now Mazzara on the first pitch will fly out lazily to center field, so... The first two hitters had Plezak on the ropes. And the next two guys came up and let him right off the ropes. Midway through the fourth, 2 nothing White Sox. Oscar Mercado steps into play, 5 for 17 on the season so far. He'll face Reynaldo Lopez, who's sitting on 41 pitches here, to start the fourth. And this one is lifted down the first baseline and curves foul. Another long strike. He's given up a few long strikes down the first base side. As this one is low and inside for ball one, one and one the count. Lopez moving the ball around nicely. Rondal seems to have a plan for him. And this one is called for a strike. He has been painting the corners a lot. Not a lot of these pitches that are called strikes are down the middle. One and two the count. He gets him on a swinging slider outside of the zone. Completely fooled him. He reached out for that. Fourth strikeout for Lopez in his many innings. And you just want to see this guy roll today. I've been told the White Sox have virtually their full complement of relief pitchers as well for this game. Although you would think with the weather, there's a possibility this does not go nine as the rain continues to fall. Lindor takes an outside corner strike for strike one. Owen won the count with one out in the bottom of the fourth for Francisco Lindor, 2 nothing White Sox. And that one's outside ball one. Lopez is working quickly. Grandal is moving the ball back and forth along the corners as a changeup takes Lindor off his feet as he barely gets a piece of it for strike two, one and two the count. Rondal calls for a high pitch, the pitch on the way, it is right where he called for it. Lindor does not bite. You could see him throw his glove up there after Lindor looked towards the pitcher. Lopez with pinpoint accuracy just didn't get him there. 
This one is low, and now it's 3-2 and two the count with Fran Mill Reyes on deck. Reynaldo Lopez working against Francisco Lindor here in the bottom of the fourth of the full count. And that one is fouled off down the third base line. It was right on the outside corner. 50-50, that would have been called a strike. Next pitch on the way. Gets him to chase one high outside the zone, but he fouls it off and will reset at 3-2. and two. At some point, Lindor is not going to swing at these things outside the zone. This time, he swings underneath a slider that was left up and out of the zone at about neck high. And he just believed that ball was going to go somewhere else and swung underneath it for strike number three. And Reynaldo Lopez has his fifth strikeout here with two outs in the fourth inning. And Fran Mil Reyes to the plate, 0 for 1 today. Low outside four seam fastball, ball one. Reyes is 4 for 13, hitting 308 so far on the season, grounded out in the first inning. Reynaldo Lopez has him 1 and 0 with two outs in the bottom of the fourth and a 2 0 lead for the White Sox. 84 mile an hour offering taken for a strike in the high outside corner. 1 and 1 the count, Lopez the pitch. Swung on and fouled down the first baseline. Close to the bag. 1 and 2 the count and the pitch. Strike three. Slider froze him on the inside portion of the plate. And Lopez strikes out the side. Strikes out the side in the fourth inning. He has six strikeouts through four in the White Sox lead, two to nothing. As we go to the top of the fifth, Luis Robert comes to the plate 0 for 1 in this game. Zach Plesek has not pitched a bad game. In fact, he's got 52 pitches as he starts the fifth inning. He's not that far behind the pace to be able to go deep into a game. Both pitchers have been efficient, but Lopez has been on fire no matter how much the weather tries to douse him. 1-0 the count, and this next pitch is a four-seam fastball he just missed and fouled straight back. 1-1 the count to Luis Robert. Angels all over Texas today, 8-3 the final. Tehran with the win. He was an acquisition in the offseason for them. 2-1 the count on a ball to Robert and Plesek into the line for the fourth pitch of this at bat. And that one is fouled back, 2-2 two two the count. Boston and Baltimore tied up at four in the fifth. We go to Boston after the Cleveland Indians series. We've got one more tomorrow with them. And then we go to Boston on Thursday with a day off on Friday because Thursday is their home opener, unless there's a rain out on Thursday. Then it would be played on Friday. Inside changeup swung over by Robert. He got twisted around on that one. And he's mad at himself, talking to himself, going back to the bench. And that's a strikeout for Plezak. Both pitchers performing here in the rain. Or maybe the rain is affecting the hitting. One or the other. One out here in the top of the fifth. White Sox lead two to nothing. Leary Garcia comes up. He had a single with a bobble in center field. And then on a heads-up base running play, beat the throw in underneath the tag head first. And then scored later on in the inning. He was the second run of the inning. He's 0-1. Next pitch in the dirt. 1-1 the count. Garcia had a rough start. Got sat down after going 0 for the opening series. I'm sorry, 0 for the first two games of the opening series. Got sat down, came back, went 1 for 4 last night, and he has a hit tonight. 2-1 the count, and the pitch on the way inside almost hit him. 3-1 and one with Tim Anderson on deck. Timmy's got three weights on that bat as he swings it. Everybody's got their own thing that they do before they get up to the plate. 3-1 the count, please act to Garcia. Inside chopped foul down the first base line. Probably would have been called a strike. Lower inside part of the plate. Three and two the count the pitch. And that one's high for ball four. And Plezak is angry with himself. He makes a motion where he's angry, but it's obvious he's angry at himself. He's not glaring at the umpire. He's walking around the mound, though, with his head down. And the man is drenched, as most of these players are, as the rain continues to fall. Half the fans are standing underneath the deck. If you're on the lower deck, they're underneath the overhangs. But half of them still sitting out there as Anderson puts this one out to center field towards the left field side. He'll come over and make an easy grab on the first pitch there for the second out. Garcia heads back to first base. Tim Anderson has been anxious. He swung at the first pitch in all of his at-bats so far in this game. Not very patient here in the rain. And uncharacteristic for a man who has been ruling the batter's box early on this season. 0-1 the count to Grandal on a called strike. Run around first base in the top of the fifth with two outs. The pitch. And that one is low and inside for strike number two. Rain continues to come down here. 0-2 count, two out. Two-nothing White Sox. Garcia's going to go. This one's inside. Bad throw. 
Bad pitch, bad throw to second base. He's easily in at second, so Garcia will steal second. On ball one to Grandal. He's a little bit closer, so if Grandal can get a hold of one, he's got a guy in scoring position now quickly with two outs and a 1-2 count in the top of the fifth. The pitch on the way. Swung on and missed on a changeup that fell out of the zone. No way Garcia was going to steal his way all the way around. Somebody had to get a hit. Didn't happen. Midway through the fifth, 2-0 White Sox. The rain continues to pour here at Progressive Field in Cleveland. Want to quickly remind you to check out Cork and Carry at the park and order some food on Grubhub. You can do it during this game right now or make plans for later on in the week with the family. They got something for everybody. They got burgers. They got hot dogs. They got wings. They got some great sandwiches. And the burgers are award-winning. They've got incredible appetizers, side dishes. Go check out the entire menu on Grubhub. That's how they're surviving right now is through that. So help them out. Make them part of your rotation for takeout orders as we take care of our small businesses here during a time of need. They have helped us out. We want you to help them out as Jose Ramirez steps in. They will be open and ready for business when baseball resumes as normal. Although this feels normal, doesn't it? As right now, the Lopez throws a 1-0 pitch high to Jose Ramirez and sets for pitch number two here in the bottom of the fifth. Outside ball two. Rain is getting a little heavier right now. The giant American flag out in right center field here in Progressive, and it's a big one, is straight out, indicating the wind blowing slightly in and towards the first base line. Is this a ground ball and an out to Jose Abreu? He takes that unassisted for out number one, and Tyler Naquin comes in. He steps up to the plate, and Lopez throws him a pitch. And this one is sent out into right field. Mazzara back towards the wall, shading. That is going to clear the wall. I can't believe that got out. Exit velocity of only 98 miles an hour. That was clearly held out by gusting, swirling wind. 373 feet into the first row in right field. The cheapest home run we've seen all season brings the Indians to 2-1. to one. Lopez has been incredible up to this point. And it just hung up there. Mazzaro just kept waiting for it to come down. It didn't. 2-1 sack still. One out in the bottom of the fifth innings. Carlos Santana to the plate. And Lopez delivers. Strike one. He is not going to be intimidated. That was a 92-mile-an-hour fastball. High and dead center down the middle. He's going to come right at the next batter. And he needs to do that. He's pitched very well here. But what this young man needs to do is keep pitching well. As this ball is flared out into the gap in right center field, Mazzara is going to come over, and he's going to get it. And if you watch the way that ball moved and even the home run, it seems as though something is swirling up there where a hard-hit ball slows down and starts drifting towards the right field side of the, of, the, of the ball field, but also seems to hang up there as if there's some sort of vortex in this rain that's keeping the ball up a little bit longer than it should and moving it. Very strange situation out here. One and one the count on a swinging strike to Domingo Santana after the first pitch was a ball. And Lopez gives him pitch number three inside on the corner. Didn't get the call. Two and one the count with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. White Sox up two to one in some nasty weather. This one is outside. Three and one the count. Roberto Perez on deck. Perez is only hitting uh, 125, but he got his only home run of the season against the White Sox. The pitch on the way, swinging strike, strike two, as he swung through a fastball down the middle, couldn't keep up with it. Three and two the count, two outs, bottom of the fifth. And Lopez trying to limit the damage that came off of that weird home run by Tyler Naquin. And that one is fouled down the first base line. Got to give him credit. The fans that are in the stands have decided I'm going to be wet and I'm going to be cold and I'm going to get sick. But I'm going to sit there as this one is flared out in the right field for a base hit. Mazzara thought about going to first base to try to throw him out. And then just threw it to the cutoff man. But for half a second, you could see him pull up like he was going to try to make a play on the base runner. So Reynaldo Lopez, extremely sharp, strikes out the side in the fourth inning. But he's given up a home run and now a single here in the fifth. But he's got two outs. He has spread that out and he can limit the damage. He doesn't look any less sharp, but he has now thrown 70 pitches. So he is laboring a little bit more here in the fifth inning. And it's time for him to take it to him. Roberto Perez stands in and swings at an inside slider. Strike one. Had a great conversation with James Fox of Future Sox yesterday on the broadcast. Talking about what's going on in the real world of Major League Baseball. 
And what's going to probably happen and what has been agreed on between the players and baseball is this one is flied out to Mazzara. Check that out if you haven't heard that game yet. Just find him. He's in the early innings. Lopez goes into the dugout with his team, still up 2-1. to one. Both teams with three hits as we head to the top of the sixth inning. Sox up 2-1 in Cleveland. The Indians have two pitchers going in the bullpen as Zach Plesak stands in with 69 pitches here to start the sixth inning, losing 2-1 to one right now. And Jose Abreu is up at the plate, and the rain continues to come down. Umpires seem determined to get this game in. It hasn't really changed since the first inning, so if you stopped it now, you'd have a lot of people yelling, well, why did you start it in the first place? But at some point, the dirt gets so wet that the field may be in a different condition, even though the rain hasn't gotten heavier. First pitch is a ball, and second pitch is also one low. 2-0 the count to Abreu with Jimenez on deck. I would expect Lopez in the sixth inning, but I would expect the White Sox to not be afraid to have somebody warming in the bullpen just in case. This young man is your fifth starter, and he's pitched well. You want to build up some confidence, but on the other hand, Ricky Renteria doesn't seem interested in babying him anymore. So you might see him just keep him out there. 3-0 pitch is taken all the way for strike one by Abreu. And he's 3-1 and one now here in the top of the six with a 2-1 to one lead. Zach Plesak with the pitch. Low and outside ball four. Plesak has put on far more runners than his counterpart, Lopez. And in reality, is only down by one run. So he has had some good fortune. The White Sox, I think at this moment, need to turn that good fortune into bad fortune. As Aloy Jimenez steps in, 0 for 1. He's reached base on a walk, and he takes an outside corner fastball for strike one. Abreu standing over at first base, watching this pitch as a high inside slider goes for 0-2. Both pitchers have used the high slider today that has started up above the zone and dropped back in again, and they've both done it effectively. 0-2 count to Jimenez. He stands waiting. Long delay by Plesak, the pitch. Outside, he swings and misses. It was almost as if Plesak slowed down on purpose to get the timing of Jimenez off, and Jimenez probably should have stepped out of the batter's box, but didn't. And then he throws one outside of the zone, and Jimenez chases for the sixth strike out of the game for Plesak, who immediately comes after Yoan Mancada with a first pitch strike. Mancada is two for two tonight. Home run, a single, had the RBI when he knocked it himself. And the pitch is on the way. And that one is dribbled down the third base line over the bag, fair. Yoan Mancada's three for three, it's bobbled. But the runner will hold. Abreu did not want to risk it because he would have had to advance. That would have been a single with an error and a runner standing on second because there's no way they would have gotten Mancada, but Abreu had already pulled up at second and would have had to restart, and the ball did not roll away enough. So Abreu holds at second, Mancada's at first. Encarnacion comes up to the plate and takes a low pitch for ball one. Encarnacion is only three for 14 on the season, hitting 214. He's got a strikeout and a ground out in this game. You'd like to see him get something here. He seems determined up at the plate as Plesak remains in the game and throws him ball two. One out here in the top of the sixth inning. Yoan Mankata going to the five spot has been a spark for the White Sox offense. And it wasn't like it hurt uh, Grandal to go up to the two spot because he got on base as well today. The pitch. And that one is chopped foul on the first base line. Two and one the count. As the rain continues to pour, Plesak is in the 80s for his pitch count now. And at some point very soon, we're going to see one of those pitchers in the bullpen as this one is outside. Encarnacion does not chase. He thought about it. 3-1 and one the count, and Plesak lets out a long sigh as he walks back behind the mound, takes a breath, and gets back in there. Stares in. 3-1 count on Encarnacion with two men on in the pitch. That one is ball four high. Plesak wanted it. He is jabbering up there. He is jabbering at the umpire. The umpire just told him to go back out there to, to the mound. He was on thin ice there. He had a lot to say about that pitch, but that pitch has been called a ball all day. And now Terry Francona comes out, and he's going to go with the righty with the bases loaded. So the White Sox lead 2-1 to one here with one out, and the sacks packed with sacks. And they will get a relief pitcher. We'll tell you about him in a moment on sacks in the basement. Hunter Wood, we saw him last night. He looked sharp when we saw him last night, but it's a different night, different circumstances. 
pouring outside with a Nomar Mazzara up at the plate. Three for 17 on the season with a couple RBIs. And the base is loaded with one out. Anything but a double play here, Nomar, and the pitch on the way. And that one is a low outside changeup. He's trying to induce that double play. And it's called for a strike. Mazzara is hitting 500 with runners in scoring position so far in this season. He's only had a couple opportunities to do that, though. The pitch. This one is sent into right field. Is it going to get over the right fielder's head? It will. He leaps for it. He misses it. It bounces off the wall. One run scores. Two runs score. Carnese onto the plate. And he's out. He's out. And Carnacion should have held up. He comes around again, aggressive base running. A windmill at third base. He's out by at least 15 feet. And what will go down is a triple for Mazzaro. And it was just a windmill over there at third base. Look, the first two guys, Abreu and Mancata, score easily on that play. But Encarnacion is just a little bit past third base as the relay man is taking the throw in from the outfield. And Mazzara is halfway from second to third. So I don't know if it's because Mazzara was on his horse so much in catching up to Encarnacion or if there was a brain fart at third base. But Encarnacion tries to score and he ends up making the second out of the inning. The good news here is the White Sox scored two on that double. I'm sorry, triple now. It's a triple by Mazzara. Would have been a double if everybody would have held up. A triple by Mazzara. And are up 4-1 to one with Luis Robert up at the plate, 2-2 two and two the count. As this one is flared in the left field, Mazzara will score on a base hit by Robert. It is 5-1 White Sox, and Hunter Wood comes into the game, and the Sox hitters do their job. Mazzara with the triple that scores two with Encarnacion out at the plate trying to make a three. Robert with a base hit scoring Mazzara. He stands on first base. And it's 5-1 to one with Yuri Garcia up at the plate with two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Pitch out, Robert is not going. They are rattled here in Cleveland. They just expected the Sox to pour it on right there and steal, but he didn't. A lot of speed on first base. They tried to pitch out on the first one. Now he's going. They don't pitch out, and he's under the tag easily. Good job to hold him back on one pitch, and now Robert easily steals second base. That man can fly. He was down and laying on the base before the ball got there. He got a great jump. So standing on second base is Luis Robert. The Uri Garcia's 1-1 here with two outs in the top of the six. 5-1 lead for the Sox. And that's a high strike. One and two the count. The Mazzara hit just kept carrying. Hit the top of the wall. Right fielder jumped, leaped for it as he was running backwards. And it goes right over the top of his glove. This is a drop third strike. It'll be thrown down and it'll just barely get Garcia that was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be Leary Garcia is out though and that ends the inning midway through the six the Chicago White Sox bats come alive at the perfect time and they lead five to one here in Cleveland you are listening to a White Sox simulated season every single game broadcasted on Sox in the Basement found everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SoxInTheBasement.com with post-game analysis and recap done by Sox on 35th at SoxOn35th.com and brought to you by our wonderful advertisers over at Family Waterproofing Solutions and our sponsors, Cork and Carey at the Park is the first pitch by Lopez. is flied out quickly to Nomar Mazzara for the first out of the inning. Cesar Hernandez flew out to right. Now Oscar Mercado will come in and Reynaldo Lopez now pitching with a four-run lead. And that should give you some renewed confidence if you're Lopez. As he faces now the top of the lineup, he gets the first hitter on one pitch to fly out to Mazzara. And Mercado steps in now 0 for 2. A high slider for a ball. Mercado is 0 for 5 now lifetime against Lopez with two strikeouts. He collected one of those in this game. Next pitch fouled off 1-1. One and one. The next pitch on the way, and this one is low, but catches the strike zone. And then a strike 2, 1-2 and two the count. Lopez has not had an inning where he's pitched an exorbitant amount of pitches. Pretty much every inning, he ends up pitching somewhere between 13 to 15 pitches. That is a strike called right down the middle that was clearly in the zone. Mercado complaining, but I think it's because he's wet and he's losing by four. Not because it was a bad pitch. And Lopez cruising here with two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning. And he goes to Lindor here. And this one is... Foul down the third baseline. That was a weird one. 
That one at first looked like it was going to be fair, and then it went really, really foul. The wind is swirling here as the rain comes down. It's kind of difficult to judge what's happening here. A lot of shadows in the ballpark as well. Lindor fouls that one off. He's 0-2. Two outs, bomb at a six. Lopez with the pitch. Inside, ball one. He's hoping he'll chase there defensively swing. He can take that chance with this count and this lead. And this pitch on the way. And that one's chopped foul. One and two the count. Lindor has had a rough time against the White Sox so far in this series. And that is strike three. Inside fastball. Lindor could not get around quick enough. One, two, three in the sixth. Sox lead 5-1 going to the top of the seventh. Indians have double barrel action in the pen, but they're going to send Hunter Wood out there again. I don't know what he showed him in the last inning that made him feel so confident, but he's out there. Tim Anderson steps in and takes a high fastball for ball one. I think Lopez could get the bomb of the seventh. He's got a four-run lead here, and he looks great as that pitch is outside ball two on a cut fastball. He also has not even hit 80 pitches yet in the game, and the man is cruising right now. That pitch is low for a strike right at the knees. Down the middle, 2-1 and one the count to Tim Anderson, who's 0 for 3 today, but at least taking some pitches. This one is shot down the third baseline, just foul in the corner near the wall in the outfield. He almost got himself a double or a triple there, and that one's up the middle, almost took the legs out of Hunter Wood. Goes over second base in the center field, and Tim Anderson is on today. He will not have an offer. He will continue his hitting streak, which is up to five. He has a hit in all five games this season, and he is standing on first base, soaking wet. Everybody here is soaking wet. It was as if the umpires got up today and said, we just want to see baseball, and I get it, because I think we all have that feeling right now in the cockles of our heart, as that's a pitch out on Anderson, nobody going. Rondell's 0 for 2 with a sack fly and an RBI in this game. 3 for 18 on the season, that's 167, but like we said, it's early. And Anderson on first base, and it's 2-0. and Hunter Wood, they must hate him. Not only has he had a rough time, they sent him back out there, and he's got this long mange of hair that is stuck to him because of the amount of rain that's coming down. He must be miserable right now as he tries to pitch the Osmani Grandal. And that one is a low outside fastball chopped down the third base line. Two and one the count to Grandal. Top of the seventh, 5-1 White Sox the pitch. And that one's fouled off down the third base line again. Two and two the count. Anderson still standing over at first base. He's not going anywhere. That one is fouled off. Pitcher sets, 2-2 count. The pitch on the way, Anderson goes. That one is fouled off. Trying to protect. That would have been a strike. Anderson's got to go back to first base. The pitcher sets, looking at Anderson now. The pitch on the way. That one is flared out into left field. Diving, he misses it. It's going to roll to the wall. Tim Anderson gets to third. Will they weave him home? They will. Another bad send, and he's out at the plate. Out at the plate. That is the third White Sox runner that has been sent home, and it made no sense. How do you... I'm flabbergasted, folks. In this series, the White Sox have been out at the plate three times. Is there no scouting report as Adam Plutko comes in for the Indians? Is there no scouting report on the arms of the outfielders that the White Sox have available to them when it comes to the Cleveland Indians? As this one is grounded the first base by Abreu for out number two, the runner advances. It'll go down as a double for Grandal. Ball fell in front of a diving left fielder, rolled to the wall. I get that you want to go all the way home on something that exciting, but he was out. And maybe we're just hurrying up because it's raining. And maybe what happened yesterday is not related to today. But we've seen two guys thrown out at the plate today for the White Sox. And luckily they lead 5-1 because if they were losing this game, there'd be a lot of splaining to be done. There's still going to be some splaining, but there'll be a lot more. 0-2 the count to Jimenez now with two outs in the top of the seventh and a runner on third. He strikes out. Swinging over a changeup low down by his knees. Plutko gets the Indians out of the inning. The Sox blow a chance, in my opinion, to score a run. You don't know what would have happened, but I think a runner on third base and a runner on second when Abreu comes up and grounds the ball may have conceded the run there. So instead of 6-1, to one, it's 5-1 to one still. In the bottom of the seventh, as Fran Mel Reyes comes into the game, Fran Mel Reyes steps to the plate. 
and he will face Reynaldo Lopez, who remains in the game. I said earlier I didn't think he had gotten over 80 pitches. He has, but it's only at 82 pitches right now, and he was cruising, and Ricky Renteria wants to let him go out there and continue to pitch. And this one is flared out into the right center field gap, Mazzaro underneath it, and one gone on one pitch. And if the Indians are going to do us a favor by swinging at the first pitch on everything, Lopez could finish the game. Jose Ramirez steps in. He had a bomb in the ninth inning off Alex Colome last night that ruined the White Sox party. As they had taken an early lead, given up that lead, then taken the lead back late in the game, only to see themselves lose in 10. As this is a soft ground ball, Jimenez picks it up. Ramirez will get all the way to second because a shift allowed him to just dribble something down the third base line. There was no third baseman there because he's standing at short. Jimenez has to get the ground balls that finally gets to him. Ramirez on his horse comes all the way around. You know, the shift has killed the White Sox a lot this season. I have seen it work once or twice, but I hate seeing a guy hit something that would have been an out and get a double out of it because you don't have a guy standing at third base. Because that's an outside slider call for a strike. We've got a runner on second with one out. 0-1 the count to Tyler Naquin. 5-1 lead for the White Sox, and Reynaldo Lopez, the starter, still on the mound. No motion yet in the White Sox bullpen. There hasn't been any need to this point. That one just misses the inside corner. One and one the count. Sorry if I blew anybody's eardrums out there while I was yelling about that send, but that didn't make any sense to me. When I asked the question, are they going to send him, I thought the next words out of my mouth were going to be, no, he holds. And then all of a sudden, he was running. That's an inside pitch. Popped out to Tim Anderson at short. And that's two away. Runner, of course, holds at second base. Carlos Santana steps up to the plate. He had a single in the second inning and was out trying to get to second base. And a very similar hit to what Ramirez had, but Ramirez was able to get to second base. On a ground ball to third, where the shift left nobody there. And I've always said that about the shift. If, if, a, if you're going to put a shift on, guys should know how to hit the ball to the other side. And the Indians have done a good job of that today. Without that, Lopez has given up several fewer hits than what he actually has given up in this game. He is 1-1 one one to Carlos Santana right now. His pitch count has gotten into the 90s. I would imagine the White Sox want to see him get through seven strong and then turn this over to the bullpen with Aaron Bummer most likely taking over the eighth inning. And this pitch is low for ball two, 2-1 two and one the count. 5-1 lead here with two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning and one runner on second base to Carlos Santana. This one's dribbled to first base. Abreu will take it by himself, step on the bag, and the White Sox now are through seven. With a 5-1 lead, a great performance by Reynaldo Lopez tonight. We'll see if he comes up in the eighth inning or not on a rainy night in Cleveland. Yoan Moncada steps to the plate, three for three with a home run. After doing nothing for the first four games of the season, he fouls this one straight back into the rain, and that will stay in the ballpark right behind home plate. It is caught right up against the backstop for out number one on the first pitch for Moncada as he fouls that one off. Edwin Encarnacion comes up to the plate. 16,698 in attendance tonight. That's the official announcement. I don't know how many of them have stayed this late in a game where the Indians are losing 5-1, and the downpour has been going on since before the game started. Pitch to Encarnacion as he flies straight up into the air. Is anybody going to catch it from the Indians? It's swirling. Now Jose Ramirez calls everybody off and almost falls backwards trying to catch it. That ball... That ball went up in between the catcher and the third baseman, right on the line. It then drifted over towards the dugout and then drifted back towards the pitcher's mound before it landed. That's how bad the wind is right now out there. Two outs for the Sox now. Nomar Mazzara up. He had a triple in this game where he cleared the bases. Two runs scored. And Encarnacion, as we mentioned, was thrown out at the plate. But the Sox are up 5-1. Adam Plutko continues to pitch for the Indians. As Mazzara flies this towards the line, but the shift is there for him. So what would have been a hit for most people ends up being a fly out to the right fielder along the first base line. One, two, three, go to Sox. And we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. The Sox up five to one, and Domingo Santana expected to come to the plate. And Steve Shishik will come in with Aaron Bummer still warming up to face Santana. Santana is hitting poorly. Shishek looked great last night against Indians hitters, and Santana did not get a look at him. And you're going to get the righty-righty combination here. So he's going to throw from the right side. He does have to face three guys. 
But he could be a heck of a setup, man. And if Ricky Renteria wants to give Alex Colomi the night off, he can go back to Bummer. But right now with a 5-1 lead, it will be Shishek. 0-1, and he throws a low inside sinker for ball one. 1-1 one one the count, bottom of the eighth inning. 5-1 White Sox. As this one is lifted out in the right field for a base hit. And Shishek gives up a hit to Domingo Santana. And the number nine hitter, Roberto Perez, will come up 0-2 with a strike on the lineup. He's 2 for 17 on the season. He's got a runner on first. His team's down by four here in the bottom of the eighth with no outs. As Steve Shishek steps up and the pitch. Strike one down the middle, slider. Shishek was masterful last night against this Indians lineup. They were completely confused by him. And with the guys coming up, two righties at least that he was going to face at the bottom of the lineup, it made perfect sense to bring him in instead of Bummer in this situation. But Bummer's ready in case Ciszek has any problems. So based upon where guys were in the batter's boxes, that's why we have the pitching combination that we have right now, I believe. 5-1 to one White Sox, 1-2 and two the count, Bob at the eighth, runner on first base to the number nine hitter for the Cleveland Indians. In the rain, he swings at a slider low and outside, and he is out. He is. He looks back at Grandal laughing like, why would you call that pitch on me that was mean? And he walks back to his bench. And Ciszek has the first out of the inning in the form of a strikeout as Cesar Hernandez steps up. Now, Hernandez is a lefty, and under the old rules now, you go to Bummer. You can't do that because of the new rules of Major League Baseball where he has to face three batters or finish an inning. This would be his third batter right here. Runner still on first, 1-0 the count. The pitch on the way. Low, inside, ball two. Almost got away from Grandal. That ball was tailing. We talked about it yesterday, Ciszek's delivery, where he's always pitching as if somebody's on base. That is a low sinker, just caught the inside portion of the plate, 90 miles an hour for a strike one, two and one the count. He comes quick to the plate, and there's a lot of motion on the ball. And that one's a low sinker. Mercado's on deck, 3-1 the count, runner on first with one out. The wind is swirling. Maybe it's messing up the uh, the way that uh, Ciszek brings the ball to the plate just because of all the action he puts on there. That one is fouled off 3-2 to count now. Not really a stealing threat over at first base, so it's going to be between pitcher and batter right now. And that is a strike three sinker on the outer portion of the plate. He paints the corner perfectly, and he strikes out Hernandez. And there are two outs in this inning now. Steve Ciszek has been brilliant so far in these two games against the Indians. And he will pitch now to Oscar Mercado. Another right-handed batter. So, of course, it makes sense for him to stay out there. Mercado's 0 for 3. The runner remains on first. 5-1 game. Bottom of the eighth. Two outs. 0-1 the count. The pitch on the way. Outside portion of the plate now he moves, and he gets that corner. And it's 0-2 the count. Sometimes you can see a pitcher and you can see that he's got it together. Earlier on in this game, there was an inning where Reynaldo Lopez could do no wrong. Steve Ciszek looks that way every time he goes out there. So this one is grounded to Mancada. He throws it to second for the force out. And the White Sox are out of that inning. At the end of eight, White Sox lead 5-1. to one. Nick Wickren, who Aloy Jimenez hit a bomb off of last night, will come in here for the Indians to pitch the top of the ninth. And Luis Robert, one for three with a single and RBI, will come to the plate in the top of the ninth with a 5-1 White Sox lead and a low four-seam fastball goes for ball one. Aaron Bummer may eventually be the closer on this team, but the closer role is still Alex Colome, as you can tell that by the fact that Bummer has sat down as this one is outside for ball two, 2-0 two the count to Robert, and Colome is going to come in and pitch, and it makes perfect sense because he's going to have a four-run lead. It's not going to actually be a save situation. You hope it doesn't turn into one. But you want the guy to get his confidence back after last night. It's a perfect situation to do that. This one is flied out to left, and that's one away. Leary Garcia comes to the plate in the ninth spot. He's one for two on the day. The single and a run scored. And Wittgren with the pitch. Low fastball taken for strike one. The pitch on the way. That one is chopped foul down the first base line. Somebody's going to ask the... Uh, the Indians folks that make the decision with the umpires on why we played this game, why did we play this game and get soaked if the White Sox were going to torch us tonight? I mean, the game's not over yet. One and two there on a ball high and outside to Leary Garcia. 
when you make a decision to play a game, I know you're hot and you're 4-0 and and you're rolling. But if you're an Indians player, you're disgusted you had to play this game tonight unless something amazing happens here for you in the bottom of the ninth. Because that one's in the dirt. 3-2 and two the count. So Garcia was 0-2 and, and comes back to 3-2 and two with Tim Anderson on deck, who's already extended his hitting streak to all five games of this season. The wind, the pitch... And he flares this out down the first baseline, going foul into the stands. And they'll reset. That was probably ball four. Pitch on the way. He checks it up. They're going to appeal the third. And no, he did not go. And Leary Garcia does not go at a high offering on the inside portion of the plate. And he will walk down 90 feet to first base with the bases on balls. And he didn't go. You can see that on the replay. That's a good check. Umpire appealed down. Third base um didn't think so either. Tim Anderson steps in with a runner on first base here with a 5-1 lead in the top of the ninth inning and one out. The rain seems to be tapering off a little bit, but it's still coming down. This one is high and inside for ball one. They'll reset in the pitch. High, ball two. 2-0 count. Garcia on first base. He's going. This one is low for a strike. Garcia down the second, and he is safe underneath the tag. So Leary Garcia with his second stolen base of the game, and Anderson steps in still, 2-1 the count, with Garcia now on second, and pretty much the exact same pitch, but this time called a ball. 3-1 the count to Anderson with Grandal on deck here in the top of the ninth, and Garcia standing out second base. Sox still being aggressive. They want to continue to pour it on here. This pitch is inside, jams Anderson as he fouls this, Towards the dugout. Get out of here. He will not get that out of here. It'll be caught near the camera well by Carlos Santana for the second out in foul territory. Yasmani Grandal will step in. One for three with a double and an RBI. Four for 19 on the season. A 5-1 White Sox lead with two outs in the top of the ninth. And Leary Garcia standing out at second base. As the rain continues to come down. And this first pitch inside is flared foul down the third base line. Whitgren taking his time and now pitching. And that's low for ball one, one and one to count. There's part of you that would like to see the White Sox get back one of those runs that got torched at home plate in this game. And that is a strike on an ugly pitch, which got an uglier swing from Grandal as he swings at something low and inside, nowhere near the plate, and he's one and two. But even without that, Sox have played well today. Grandal swings through a four-seam fastball in the zone for strike three. And he goes down. We will go to the bottom of the ninth. The White Sox lead 5-1 in Cleveland, trying to give them their first loss of the year. Alex Colome now will come into the game for the White Sox as we are here in the bottom of the ninth inning. This is a simulated White Sox broadcast from Sox in the Basement, found everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SoxInTheBasement.com and presented to you by Cork and Carey at the park at 33rd and Princeton. Get some great Cork and Carey food any day of the week through Grubhub. Lindor versus Colome, one for six lifetime. As Colome throws the first pitch for a high ball and brings the second offering for a strike on the outside corner of the plate, one and one. Colome had some trouble last night. It wasn't just a home run by Ramirez that tied it in the first at bat. In fact, the home run is probably the thing you would least blame him for because it was a good pitch. It was low in the zone. It was inside at the knees, just barely touching the corner. Ramirez just made a great swing on a pitch and put that thing out of the ballpark. Two and one the count as the pitch is on the way. Afterwards, though, Colome had to come back. He came back immediately with a strikeout, and then he ran into some trouble and almost gave away the game in the ninth inning. He did not. The game instead was given away by Herrera in the tenth. And that one is popped up to Colome. He will catch it himself and flip it around the infield. And that is one out. Reynaldo Lopez threw 93 pitches and struck out eight with one earned run and one walk today through seven full innings for the best performance of all five starters the first time through the rotation. By far, that's the kind of thing he has to do if he's going to hold on to his job and force White Sox management to make tough decisions when Michael Kopech is available and when Carlos Rodon is also available. First pitch is a strike. Second pitch is outside ball one. One and one the count. Colome to Fran Mill Reyes, who's 0 for the game in that four spot. And that is a strike on the inside corner cut fastball. One and two the count. 
The Pirates beat the Cubs today, 8-6. to six. Colin Moran put on a show at the plate as this one is dribbled in between Garcia and Abreu. On the right side, Mazzara comes in for a base hit for Reyes, and the Indians have a runner on here in the ninth inning. Outside pitch. He went outside of the zone to get that. He went with the ball, just making contact, and now here comes the kryptonite, at least for Alex Colome yesterday. Jose Ramirez comes to the plate, one for three. Sox still lead by four. There's one out here in the bottom of the ninth with one runner on. Indians fans acting like there's five guys on base, which is impossible. This pitch is inside a changeup, and it goes for a ball. Ramirez is three for seven after what he did last night. That was his second home run off of Colome in his career in seven at-bats against him. This is the eighth at-bat. This one's in the dirt. It's going to get away from Grandal. Runner advances 90 feet to second base. Doesn't matter. Pitchers in these situations, and even the players, when you have a big lead like this, when you have a lead in which you don't even have the tying run in the on-deck circle, can't worry about what runners are doing. There's part of you that wants to almost say, can we just tell Reyes he can run the third and run home so the pitcher doesn't think about it? As this one is outside and fouled down the third base line, two and one the count. Because he doesn't matter. If you want to play a shift, play a shift here. If you want to concede a base to him, concede a base. Because whether or not the White Sox win five to four or win five to one, they still win. But I, I understand the pride in trying to stop every run, especially for a closer. This is popped up behind the plate. Rondal underneath it, and that is out number two for the Sox. And Tyler Naquin, who had a solo home run in the fifth, the only run of the game for the Cleveland Indians, steps up with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. A runner on second, and the Indians trailing the White Sox, five to one, Colome with the pitch. Low fastball in the zone, strike one. White Sox trying to end a perfect start by the Indians. They're 4-0 coming into this game. The White Sox are 2-2. Two and, two. and this is an outside cut fastball for strike two looking. So he has not swung at the first two pitches, and he is quickly 0-2. Colome sets. Grandal sets the pitch. Strike three swinging on a low-cut fastball, and the White Sox have won this game on the road in Cleveland. Snapped their four-game winning streak to open up the season and improved to three and two behind a masterful performance by Reynaldo Lopez, backed up by a bullpen with incredible pitching, honestly, by Steve Ciszek for the second straight night. And Alex Colome getting that confidence back and that swagger as he gives the high fives. Sox had some big hits in big situations. They still have a concern over there at third base with the windmill. Hopefully they'll get that resolved soon. But on a rainy night in Cleveland, the White Sox take this one 5-1. Lopez over Plesek. Great performance by Yoan Moncada tonight. 3-4 for four with a home run, an RBI, and two runs scored. Nomar Mazzara 1-4 for four with a triple. I don't understand why they call it a double, but it was a triple. I'm calling it a triple. Somebody tell Sox on 35th I'm calling that a triple. Two RBIs and a run scored. And Leary Garcia, one for two with a run. Jose Abreu, 0 for two with a run. Obviously calling the Mazzara thing a double because uh, Encarnacion was out. And they're going to say that he advanced afterwards. But let's be honest, Mazzara was almost to third base as Encarnacion was rounding third. <laughs> he, was, he was taking a triple one way or another there. But that's what the official scorer gave him. Lopez, seven innings pitched, four hits, eight strikeouts. Over seven innings, he only had one walk and one earned run. Reynaldo Lopez looked good tonight. And he needs to keep that up, that young man, if he is going to continue to hold that spot in the rotation that he got at the beginning of the year only because the pitchers that are eventually expected to take a spot are not available. The gauntlet has been thrown down, and Reynaldo Lopez answered at least for his first start of the year. The White Sox will try to take the series tomorrow in Cleveland before they head off to Boston for a three-game trip there. My name is Chris Lanuti. Thank you very much for listening to a White Sox simulated season brought to you by Cork and Carey at the park and, of course, recapped on Sox on 35th.com. And when baseball comes back for real, Sox in the Basement is around two days a week covering the White Sox for fans by fans. 
Found everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SocksInTheBasement.com. Good night, everybody. Socks in the Basement. Socks in the Basement. Socks in the Basement. Socks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always on SocksInTheBasement.com.